Hi friends, today is Acts chapter 16. Paul went first to Derbe and then to Lystra, where there was a young disciple named Timothy. His mother was a Jewish believer, but his father was a Greek. Timothy was well thought of by the believers in Lystra and Iconium. So Paul wanted him to join them on their journey. In deference to the Jews of the area, he arranged for Timothy to be circumcised before they left. For everyone knew that his father was a Greek. Okay, seems like we took a little step back there from what we, we read in Acts chapter 15 about the agreement that circumcision wasn't needed. Also, I'm noticing that Timothy's mother was a Jew and his, his father was a Greek, so I can imagine there already was some, you know, some kind of struggle in this. <laughs> Talking from experience, but anyway, I'm so thankful that the Lord like we read in, um, in Acts, I think it was 14, he looks on our hearts. He doesn't see us based on our race. Well, we're on, there is only one race. I won't get started on that. But he doesn't look at us about our skin color, um, about our economic status, our social status. He doesn't look at where we came from. He sees us from a different perspective. He knows us from our heart, meaning our spirit. He knows who the real us is. And I'm so thankful for that. I just want to take a praise break. Thank you, Lord. Okay. Um, verse 4. Then they went from town to town, instructing the believers to follow the decisions made by the apostles and elders in Jerusalem. So the churches were strengthened in their faith and grew larger every day. And so going back to that whole circumcision situation here, it says that um, Timothy, he had Timothy circumcised, which says a lot about Timothy's character, I would suppose. And it also says a lot about how determined that Timothy was that he wanted to follow Paul. Wow. Wow. And would you just think for a second, who taught Paul? Uh, who taught Timothy? You think Timothy's mother? Timothy's mother played a big role in his um, development as a believer, and you'll see later on too how his grandmother also had a big role in his believing about Jesus. And so, just some encouragement to moms and dads out there. It is important how we raise our children, and even if it seems like it's not making a difference today or it's not some big fancy thing, making a difference in your kid's life just by teaching them about Jesus and training them in, those, in, in the Word will make a difference. It's making a difference now, and it, you will see an impact about that later. But I wanted to point out how even though Paul had Timothy circumcised, he still went around teaching, both of them went around teaching that they should follow the decisions made by the apostles and elders in Jerusalem. And we just read that those decisions didn't include circumcision. So that seems a little off to me, but it also is an encouragement again how even the Apostle Paul, um, you know, sometimes he was, well, I'm sure he was a big high faith most of the time. But in this, in this instance, it doesn't, seem, it doesn't seem that way. So we'll see. Let's keep reading. Let's see what happens. Next, Paul and Silas traveled through the area of Phrygia and Galatia because the Holy Spirit had prevented them from preaching the word in the province of Asia at that time. Wow. Then, coming to the borders of Myasia, they headed north for the province of Bithynia, but again, the Spirit of Jesus did not allow them to go there. So instead, 
they went on through Malaysia to the seaport of Troas. I mean, I'm curious when he says the spirit of Jesus didn't allow them. I wonder what that not allowing looked like. Was that just like a check in his spirit saying, don't do that? Was that a strong warning? Did he hear an audible voice? Was there like a, a brick wall? Um, was there just, they missed the boat again? Or I don't know if there was a boat. I'm not that great at geography. You'll have to forgive me, but I'm curious about what that actually looked like. I wish they would have taught a little or read, told a little more about that. But anyway, if you know the answer, let me know, please. I'd, be, I'd love to know more about that. Okay, I'll try to stick with the word now. Verse 9. That night, Paul had a vision. A man from Macedonia in northern Greece was standing there pleading with him. Come over to Macedonia and help us. You know what? I think I just got my answer. He may have just had a dream. A dream where Jesus said, don't go there. May have. Okay, so, so this man from Macedonia is pleading, come over to Macedonia and help us. So we decided to leave for Macedonia at once, having concluded that God was calling us to preach the good news there. We boarded a boat at Troas and sailed straight across the island of Samothrace, and the next day we landed at Neapolis. From there, we reached Phil uh, Philippi, a major city of that district of Macedonia and a Roman colony, and we stayed there several days. On the Sabbath, we went a little way outside the city to a river bank where we thought people would be meeting for prayer. And we sat down to speak with some women who had gathered there. One of them was Lydia from Thyatira, a merchant of expensive purple cloth who worshiped God. As she listened to us, the Lord opened her heart and she accepted that Paul, what Paul was saying. She and her household were baptized and she asked us to be her guests. If you agree that I'm a true believer in the Lord, she said, come and stay at my home. And she urged us until we agreed. One day, as we were going down to the place of prayer, we met a slave girl who had a spirit that enabled her to tell the future. She earned a lot of money for her masters by telling fortunes. She followed Paul and the rest of us, shouting, These men are servants of the Most High God, and they have come to tell you how to be saved. This went on day after day until Paul got so exasperated that he turned and said to the demon within her, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And instantly it left her. Her master's hopes of wealth were now shattered. So they grabbed Paul and Silas and dragged them before the authorities at the marketplace. The whole city is in an uproar because of these Jews, they shouted to the city officials. They are teaching customs that are illegal for us Romans to practice. A mob quickly formed against Paul and Silas, and the city officials ordered them stripped and beaten with wooden rods. They were severely beaten, and then they were thrown into prison. The jailer was ordered to make sure they didn't escape. So the jailer put them into the inner dungeon and clamped their feet in the stocks. Around midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God in the prison. And the other prisoners were listening. Wow. Let's see. When we're going through a tough time, other people are listening. Other people are watching. What are we doing? How are we going through that tough time? Are we going through it with praying and singing hymns to God, or are we not? Verse 26, suddenly there was a massive earthquake, and the prison was shaken to its foundations. All the doors immediately flew open, and the chains of every prisoner fell off. 
The jailer woke up to see the prison doors open. He assumed the prisoners had escaped, so he drew his sword to kill himself. But Paul shouted to him, Don't! Stop! Don't kill yourself! We are all here! The jailer called for lights and ran to the dungeon and fell down, trembling before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them out and asked, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And what is he going to tell them, friends? <laughs> they replied, Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved along with everyone in your household. And they shared the word of the Lord with him and with all who lived in his household. Even at that hour of the night, the jailer cared for them and washed their wounds. Then he and everyone in his household were immediately baptized. He brought them into his house and set a meal before them. And he and his entire household rejoiced because they all believed in God. The next morning, the city officials sent the police to tell the jailer, let those men go. So the jailer told Paul, the city officials have said, you and Silas are free to leave. Go in peace. But Paul replied, they have publicly beaten us without a trial and put us in prison. We are Roman citizens. So now they want us to leave secretly? Certainly not. Let them come themselves to release us. When the police reported this, the city officials were alarmed to learn that Paul and Silas were Roman citizens. So they came to the jail and apologized to them. Then they brought them out and begged them to leave the city. When Paul and Silas left the prison, they returned to the home of Lydia. There they met with the believers and encouraged them once more. Then they left town. Wow, friends. This book of Acts is certainly filled with a lot of amazing and incredible adventures, to say the least. Verse 31 is one of my favorite scriptures in the whole Bible. And the reason is because I believe this word and I stand on it for my family members. It says, they replied, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved along with everyone in your household. I'm expecting that for my entire household, not just people that live in here in this house, which, which thank you, Jesus, has already happened, but for the ones in my family that don't actually live in my house, I'm still believing for their salvation. And I'm praying that God will send laborers across their path to tell them about him, some people who they will believe. And I'm expecting that to happen. I pray that you will do the same for your family. Be blessed, friends.